Hey everybody, my name is Mario Martinez and this is Amateur EMS. So today we're going to be going over an EKG practice test. We're going to have a couple of these videos kind of back to back and it's going to help you learn more about rhythms. But if you do want to learn a little bit more about some foundational knowledge or just about uh, clarifying some of these rhythms, please check out the EKG playlist. We have pretty much just every single rhythm that we can include for a four lead, not so much a 12 lead rhythm, but we'll get to that eventually. So with that being said, Here's our first rhythm. I'm going to give you guys 15 seconds to kind of analyze it and then we'll go over it, okay? Okay, so it's been 15 seconds. So if we look here, we can see that we have multiple P waves, right? We're not really too sure if this is a T wave or not, but we assume that this may be a P wave. There's our QRS complex. Uh, if we look at our rules of interpretation, we have a PR interval that's less than 0.2 seconds. But if we look, there's multiple P waves again. So there is a significant abnormality, but the P waves, even though there's a run of three of them, they do match up with the QRS complexes. There's three on each one. The QRS complexes match up with the QRS complexes. So if we were to turn this EKG around and try to cut with a cut it with a tree, it kind of almost represents a saw, and that's a clear indication of atrial flutter. So for this next one here, what do you guys think it is? So if we remember our rules of interpretation, we look for our P waves. We cannot distinguish where a P wave is. It may be enveloped inside of this ventricular beat. So we can't do if there's more than one P wave, if it's upright, things along those lines. What we can notice though, is that each of our QRS complexes are greater than uh, 0.12 seconds. It looks like if we look at the box, it's about 0.24 to 0.28 seconds. Uh, per beat because we can know that each red box is going to be 0.2 seconds and If we were to write on this EKG rhythm, we could write RIP in this now. This is VTAC now One thing that you need to note is this can be VTAC with or without a pulse and depending depending on our patient's presentation if our patient has a pulse with a VTAC or with a VTAC rhythm uh, we may want to consider a couple different things, either going with an antihistamine drug or going with synchronized cardioversion. You always want to synchronize before you cardiovert. At the same time, if they don't have a pulse, well, then we're going to start CPR. And this is one of our shockable rhythms, right? Where we can administer epinephrine. We can go ahead and defibrillate this patient, uh, depending on your settings, either at 360 joules or 200 joules, depending on if it's monophasic or biphasic, and uh, just going through your protocols. So. It's very important to distinguish with this type of patient. Do they have a pulse or do they not have a pulse? Okay, so for our next rhythm, I'm going to give you 15 seconds to analyze it, then we'll go over it. Okay, so looking at this rhythm, we can see that we have a P wave. We have one P wave matching up with every QRS complex. It looks like they match up together. And we have our QRS complex. It's less than 0.12 seconds. For our P wave, we can see that it's going to be generally less than 0.2 seconds. So if we're looking at our PR interval, there's only one P wave. We have our T waves right here. But some abnormalities, if we look at our P waves, you can see that while it matches up, we have an inversion over here. And then we have this weird abnormal morphology with our P wave. So the abnormality with the different P waves, if it instead of it just being all flat or all inverted, would make me consider this to be a wandering pacemaker for the type of rhythm. Now I'll give you 15 seconds to analyze this. Okay, so if we look at this rhythm here, we can see that it has a one P wave that matches up with our QRS complex. There's one P wave every time, but we can see that it's not upright, it's inverted instead, right? At the same time, our QRS complex is less than 0.12 seconds. There's one P wave for every QRS complex, but again, it's inverted. So what we'd wanna think, okay, this is a type of junctional rhythm. The next thing that we would wanna conclude is, is it a junctional rhythm, junctional tachycardia? 
or an accelerated junctional rhythm. And actually the accelerated one will be in between that and the junctional tachycardia. So if we take this, we'll go with, uh, let's say this one right here, moving over to this rhythm beat, we can see that it's one box, two box, three box, 3.6 boxes. So we'll take 300 divided by 3.6, oops, oops. So that's gonna be a heart rate at 83 beats per minute. Now junctional rhythms will normally run fairly slow so at 83 beats per minute, that's going to be an accelerated junctional rhythm. If it was over 100 beats per minute, then we think it's junctional tachycardia. So this is an accelerated junctional rhythm with the complete inversion of the, uh, the P wave. The next one, I'm going to give you guys 15 seconds and we're going to talk about it. Okay, so if we take a look, uh, we can note that there's absent P waves, which maybe we think, oh, is this a junctional rhythm? Is this an idioventricular rhythm? We can also note, since we can't measure the P waves, you can't measure the PR interval, if it's upright or inverted, things like that. But we can note that the QRS complex is extremely large here, right? It's abnormally large. We would say that it's about 0.4 seconds. So we're going to think, okay, maybe this is an idioventricular rhythm. The next thing that we want to do is say, is it an idioventricular rhythm or an accelerated idioventricular rhythm? So we'll start off right here and we'll move over to the next one. We have about, let's say, one box, two box, three box, about three and a half, almost four boxes. So let's say 3.6. That's going to be a heart rate at about 83 beats per minute. But if you remember, an idioventricular rhythm is around 20 to 40 beats per minute. And then 40 to 100 is an accelerated idioventricular rhythm. So this would actually be an accelerated idioventricular rhythm. The next one that we have here, I'll give you 15 seconds. Okay, so if we look at this rhythm, we can see that we have a P wave right here. Here's our T wave. We have a P wave that matches with our QRS complex, but we have little abnormalities that are popping up every once in a while, right? We have what we would normally consider to be a sinus rhythm because if we do 300 divided by 3.6, so we already just did that calculation, that's about 83 or 84 beats per minute. So this would normally be a sinus rhythm, but we have these weird little abnormalities popping up. Again, the QRS complexes are nice and tight, so we like to see that, that's at 0.12 seconds or less. Um, we're not seeing an abnormality in the PR interval, so I'm not thinking like a first degree heart block. But what are these abnormal beats? If we look at them, we can see that we have a P wave with this as well as the T wave. So we're not thinking junctional rhythm because it's upright. We're also not thinking of a premature ventricular contraction or a complex because it doesn't have a wide QRS. So we're thinking more along the lines of this being a PAC. So it's a sinus rhythm with a PAC, or a premature atrial complex. This next one, I'll give you 15 seconds. So we have something similar here, right, where we have our our P wave, there's one P wave for every QRS complex, so that's good. They're upright at the same time, so that also looks good. Our QRS complex is 0.12 seconds or less, so that looks good. Our PR interval is less than 0.2 seconds, so we're not thinking first degree heart block. So we have what we would consider a sinus rhythm, right? So to make sure it's a sinus rhythm, I would go from here to here, or I would more so go from, let's say, here to here, and that's one box, two box, three box, four box, 4.4 4 boxes or so. So if I do 300 divided by 4.4, that's going to be a heart rate at 68 beats per minute, which is really good. We have this weird abnormality again, right? So if we look, we can't see a P wave like we did in the last one. We can't see a widened QRS complex, so we don't think a PVC. So then this would be a sinus rhythm with a premature junctional complex. Here's another rhythm. I'll give you guys 15 seconds.
Okay, so if we take a look here, we see that there's one P wave, and then we have our T wave right here for every QRS complex. Each P wave matches with the P wave, QRS is matches with the QRS, and then vice versa, they all match up. The QRS is less than 0.12 seconds. The P wave is less than 0.2 seconds away from the QRS complex, so the PR interval looks really good, but we can notice it's almost happening a little bit too quickly. So if we take a look here, and we're looking from this QRS complex to the next QRS complex, it's about one box, two box, about 2.2 boxes or so. So remember our box method, we take 300 divided by, let's say 2.2. And that's going to give us a heart rate at 136 beats per minute. So a heart rate between 100 and 149 beats per minute is going to show that this is a sinus rhythm, but it's going to be a sinus tachycardic rhythm, right? So sinus tachycardia. So with that being said, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Tell me how you did in the comments below. I'd love to see if you got them all right, if you struggled on any of them. And if you did, please let me know about it. I'd appreciate it if you guys like, comment, subscribe. It shows me that you guys want to see more of this type of content. And I'm more than happy to create more EKG quiz videos like this one below. I think that there isn't that many of those videos out there. And I feel like as a student or as somebody who just likes to practice, it can be really fun to do so. So again, leave a comment below and I'll check it out, see how you guys did. And I will see you on the next one. Thank you.